Hey, so I mentioned to someone the other day that I would like to try to uh, get the Dark Souls Blender plugin that I've been working on out there for anybody to use who may be interested. Uh, it's pretty much in the same state it was in on my last update video, which is to say there are still a ton of holes. The code is really um, messy and there's just a lot of... Anyway, but it was, it's been a learning pro uh, process for me, so I enjoy, I've enjoyed doing it, but um, I just wanted to put it out there, sort of how I've been using it. Um, this is by no means a final version, hopefully, uh, or anything like that. But I don't know when I'll be able to get to that. So it may be quite a while. I've, uh, I'm working and going to classes now. So uh, anyway, enough with the excuses. Uh, I'm going to put a link to the GitHub in the, the video description. That'll take you here. And you can download this as a zip file, which I'll do here. And uh, let me take a quick sidestep here to kind of explain to anybody who hasn't been following along what this is um, if you go to um, where is it at unpack dark souls for modding this is uh, on the Google or the dark souls Nexus mods page um, this will unpack your dark souls files from the uh, dark souls one non remastered version and put them into a data format or a, data, a folder structure like this. So this is directly from that. Um, and this folder structure includes um, map files, which are found in map. And each of these represents a different uh, level in game, sort of. Um, and there's also a couple other folders, character folders. And these have uh, basically, usually like enemy models, character models, that sort of thing. You also have uh, a couple others, OBJs, which is in-world objects, barrels, boxes, carts, you know, anything like that. Um, there are parts, which is weapons and armor, I believe. And anyway, the plugin I'm working on allows you to import the 3D models from those file types specifically, uh, directly in the Blender. And this works with varying degrees of, of uh, correctness. But I'll, I'll get into that. But let me go ahead and uh, open this file. So this is going to give you this folder. And this is uh, video is sort of in lieu of a proper readme file. So I'm going to go to my Blender directory, which is usually in Program Files, Blender Foundation, Blender. I'm in version 2.79, so I'll go there. And then there you'll see a scripts folder. If you click on that, and you go to add-ons, double-click there. These are all the add-ons that are uh, currently on in my Blender setup. So I this is an old folder. I'm going to delete this one, and I'll show you. So that's not there. Pretend it wasn't there. Drag this into that add-ons folder. It'll create this folder. I like to get rid of the you'd add at the end there. Okay, so then if you open Blender, that'll show up when you do a search in the add-ons. So if I go to File, user preferences. This lets me do my add-ons and you may be on interface or editing or whatever, but if you click on add-ons at the top here, it'll bring you to this. If you just do a search now for dark, uh, you should get Dark Souls Importer for one of your options. You can open that up and see a little few details about it. Uh, it's not really version one. I should probably fix that. But if you click on this, it will uh, basically install the add-on. And I, I, let me show here, this miscellaneous tab shows up when you do that. So that's what it's it's adding on there, if you notice. So and if you want that to show up every time by default, you hit save user settings. And then now you get your little, now you get your little tab here. So, um, so for the most part, uh, this is good for loading in. Like I said, those uh, data files from the game, I'll go to that folder now. So my, I, I've moved my data folder into onto a drive directly. It'll probably be in your Dark Souls uh, install directory when you use the dark, unpack Dark Souls for modding, but mine's right here. Um, if I go to the map folder, like I said, um, I these are all different like levels. If I go to 17, I think that's Duke's Archives, and each of these are different chunks of the level, basically. So you can look at the file size here. I'm going to grab one that's about a meg, usually. One that shows up, and I'll hit the period key on the number pad to zoom over to it. So this is a piece of the level. Now, one of the things I would like to do in the future is have these all load up parented to one object. In other words, all sub-objects. Uh, so, so these aren't all separate little meshes because this gets really messy when you try to load in an entire level. You get just, you know, a hundred of these things. But in the meantime, you kind of have to do this uh, 
manually if you want. I know it's a pain in the neck, and uh, this is something I'd like to find time to implement. This is actually one of my pretty high on my list of priorities. But anyway, now if I grab that, I can you know select this and grab it, move it around, or rotate it around, and it'll um, move as one unit. I think you still go in here and select you know different pieces if you wanted, but that just makes it easier to select over here. Also, I would like to name this after the uh, FOVER file. But anyway, if I go down here to the render uh, style viewport shading, click on texture, it'll show you the textures for that. Now this is you know not lit properly or anything like that. But what this does uh, try to do, and to again various degrees of effectiveness, if you go to your node editor, which is your material setup for this object, this is a bit of a mess, but um, I'm gonna move some of these things, spread them around a bit. Uh, this tries to use the specular I mean, and normal maps and stuff to create a, a workable texture for the material for the, the object. So most of the files in game do have like a normal map and this tries to apply that. And if they have transparency, it tries to take that into account and that sort of thing. So if I were to say, let me actually turn off my GPU rendering. My GPU has been crashing my computer for some reason lately. So I'm gonna go to my world view here use nodes and add an environment map. Um, sorry, add an environment map. Um, just so we can get some some lighting. And I'm not, if I'm moving too fast, I'm sorry. I'm actually just trying to keep this video length from being ridiculous because I could go uh, ramble on endlessly. So here's my HDRIs. You can download these online and they just give you lighting basically based on an actual real world setting. So if I now close this and I hit Shift Z, I'll get a render, proper ray trace render. And uh, you know, there's some things you could do to make this more dynamic and interesting, but that's uh, that's where she lies currently. So anyway, so that's sort of a, that's a, a piece of a level imported now. I'm gonna hit A twice and delete these. And you can also, like I mentioned, you can import, uh, let me go up a level, two levels. You can also bring in OBJs from the game and these are gonna be just all sorts of things. Now, at some point I'm gonna get an error and you'll see that uh, you know, this is not complete. So this is our frozen blacksmith statue guy from Dark Root Basin. And he's got his proper texture. Now in some cases though, the textures do not uh, the, the models don't load the proper textures and that's due to me having not completely figured out the best way to go about uh, assigning textures or how they're set up in the files uh, and that's just a matter of having enough time to go through and do that mostly but my texture system right now is a bit of a mess uh, let me see if I can find one that gives an error uh, sometimes you'll get and so this is a table that breaks apart these are the pieces it has to do with like a physics object Okay, um, let me see if I can find, uh, well, let me get, I'll tell you what, the character files usually are pretty easy to find one that doesn't load all the textures for. So I believe, in fact, this is a rat. You'll see what I mean. So I've got this set to do a default texture missing texture, and so that's what this checkerboard stuff is. So some of the textures load just fine. In fact, you can see he's got that, that ax in his eye. And, um, but then some of these don't. This, I, in this case, these are like the fur textures. So you could go in here manually and you know put in a new texture if you wanted. I could even swap it to something that's already loaded. Let me do. Uh, let's give a nice wall texture. Well, my, my computer hasn't frozen up. There we go. So this is a normal map in this case. I'll do a proper. There we go. Now he's got a proper stone texture, like a proper rat. So anyway, so that that's uh, one of the issues. Um, and then there'll be various other little bugs here and there that pop up, but. Mostly it's a texture thing. Um, so a couple other things you need to know right quick, and you can use any text editor, but I'll use the in Blender text editor because if you're using Blender, you have access to this for sure. And I'm gonna open up the um, init file that came, that's one of these files that you downloaded. So if you go to your Blender folder, I'll do it manually here. C, program files, Blender foundation, Blender, 2.79 scripts add-ons and then dark souls uh, blender dark souls import if you go to the init.py 
So this is sort of the main Blender script. Um, there's two, two things you're going to need to update to get this to work properly. And they're right at the top. Actually, three things. One of this is source directory. And this, all you have to do, let me zoom in. All you got to do is change this to be wherever your um, TPF files are. So in this case, it's going to be if you go to the map directory of your Dark Souls uh, data folder, uh, map, there's a, there should be a TX folder. If you click on that, this is the path you want right here. It'll be something, something else, and then some point it'll be data map dot, or slash TX. So that's necessary. And that's the, those are image files, basically, that, that need to be used to get the textures. And then also, this is a directory of your choosing. You can put this to be anywhere on your computer. Uh, I recommend putting it close to there. In fact, I put it in the same map folder. And this script will create this folder for you. And these are just the TPF files unpacked. So the TPF files are this gobbledygook. And if I open this in, well, just whatever, Notepad++, it's, you know, it's hexadecimal non-human readable stuff. The DDS files, however, um, are image files. So if I do, um, I don't think it'll do a preview, but if I open this in, in Photoshop, you know, or Blender in this case, these are all, all textures. So these are unpacked dynamically when you open up different models. Now, if you open up a lot of models, this folder will get bigger, and right now I've got 24 megs. It should stay manageable. These are not gigantic files, but you can come in here every now and again if you're not using these textures and delete them or whatever if you want. Um, I usually go through and clear them out occasionally. Uh, and then one other thing you need is, well, this isn't really necessary, this won't break anything if you don't, but um, if you scroll down, and you can actually probably do a search. Uh, yeah, if you do a search, you get Control F, it'll bring up this toolbar on the side, but it's just as easy to probably just not worry about it. And scroll down and find the diffuse path. And again, I apologize for this is not a very convenient setup at all. Uh, this is just pointing to that missing image texture that I use. And if you don't put anything here, it'll just give you an error, but it'll still load everything. Uh, so it doesn't really mess anything up. But if you want to put, like I, I have uh, in the data folder, directly in the data folder, I have my uh, the, the missing image.png. So if you put anything you want in there, this is what it loads for missing textures right now for me. Put anything you want in there, just call it missing image PNG or call it whatever you like actually, as long as you put the file path and name here. Uh, those should be the only things you have to mess with. Everything else should link up automatically and, and run just fine based off of that. But um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, again, I'm in kind of busy lately, so I, I'll get back to you as soon as I can uh, and try to, try to help you as much as I reasonably can. Um, and if you have any suggestions, also send those my way. Uh, you can send them to my YouTube, but I would you know, prefer like a message or something like that. You can put it in the comments too. It doesn't matter. But I'm, I'm looking for suggestions. Uh, I'm unfortunately not able to develop this anywhere near full time or even part time at this point. But someday, hopefully, I can get back to it and make it more robust and make it work better with uh, Blender 2.8, which will be coming out before too long. Um, and they have the um, they have the new you know cycles materials that, that'll make uh, some of this easier to to set up. So. Uh, That'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for checking it out. Um, I hope I didn't forget anything too important. But I hope it's of use to some people. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll talk to you next time. All right. Hey, so I thought I was done, and then I remembered I had a couple other things I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention. First off, uh, thank you much to, I don't know how you say it, Nixo Jail. I mentioned him in another video. He's the guy who made the DS uh, mod. mod, And... Uh, He's you know the he's done a lot of work and he did a lot of work in interpreting the um, the data for Dark Souls and figuring out how to extract the models and that sort of thing. So his his work and he released templates for um, the binary files. So his work on that was a lot of help and uh, a big head start in a lot of ways. So thanks to him on that. I also got at one point I came across I wasn't able to find it again, but I came across a Blender FLV importer that didn't work. I couldn't get it to work. I think it was for an older version of Blender. And I wish I could remember where it was and what the name of the developer was that did that. But 
uh, his he he had um the the face files or the face data in the uh, Dark Souls files were sorted in this weird order, I guess I could say, and he had a means of sorting that out that I borrowed. And I would like to credit him, but I don't remember who it was. If I come across it at some point, I'll, I'll annotate this video or something. But I want to give credit where it's due at, at all times. So thanks to both of those people. Um, and uh, a couple other things. Uh, one I wanted to mention was that when you load in uh, a map file, and I'll go to, let's pick a random one. I don't know what this is. Let's do this one. Okay. Um, Okay, I got I got the bird's nest. So, and this may not be a great example, but it, we'll see what happens. If I hit tab and I go into edit mode on this this branch here, actually this is probably going to be a terrible example, but the example will work nonetheless. If you go to mesh and you go to vertices and you say remove doubles, okay, actually it was a great example. It move it removed five thousand eight hundred and eighty two vertices that were doubles. So one thing my script is not doing right now is removing doubles automatically. And that's something uh, I think I need to use BeamMesh for um, instead of the way I'm doing it right now, but I haven't had time to do that. Um, so I'd like it to do that automatically. In the meantime, this will probably speed up uh, any scene you've got you're working on with these files if you remove the doubles. Unfortunately, right now you have to do it manually. So again, that's tab to go into edit mode, go down to mesh, and go down to vertices, and then remove doubles. It removed four in this case, so um, that could be really helpful. Um, let me see if I can find another model for this next example. Um, so we're at Firelink right now. Let's see what this is. This is bright grass. Yeah. Oh no, it's tombstones. Okay. Um, so these are not going to be a great example of what I'm trying to show off, but let me see if I can find one right quick. What I've noticed in a lot of cases, I'll I'll look for a big file and I'll I'll click on it, thinking. It's going to be a big building and it'll be a bunch of grass or something. This is probably a good example. Um, if I, uh, basically, you know, for architecture, it makes sense for a lot of times there needs to be hard edges at the corners and things like that. But if you look at it like a round shape, like this end, end of the wall down here, this is not supposed to really be, let me go to this mode. This is not really supposed to be faceted like this. This is supposed to be a smooth round edge. So um, the game uses normals. Uh, it, it stores normal data for these for these uh, edges, so it it can when it does lighting and stuff, it can round this stuff out. And it probably uses other techniques too that I'm not aware of. Um, I think I have a, man, a manner for getting that normal data out. And I had, at one point, I was actually putting it into the models, and uh, I'd like that to be an option. And this is another example. So you you know you can click on this and set this to, to smooth, and it will smooth it out. But sometimes this smooths out edges you don't want to be smooth, so it's sort of a sort of a, a two-edged sword. And uh, in the future, this is something I'd like to work out if I can get the game's normal data to be applied to the models. But right now, that's not the case. So you may have to go through and, and mess with that manually. And in some cases, it might be a lot more work than would be nice. But um, anyway, I just wanted to point that that sort of stuff out. So you'll be aware. Anyone who's trying to use this use this to do anything uh, that could be uh, handy to know. Um, I think I remembered it all this time. If uh, if not, I'll be appending another clip at the end of the video. But if if this is indeed the end, then uh, I'll see you later.